And joining us tonight, top strategist for Great America PAC, former Reagan White House political director, Fox News political strategist, analyst, and savant, Ed Rollins, and a New York Post columnist. I just said a New York Post columnist. The. He is the New York Post columnist, <laughs> except for Cindy Adams. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I yes, got to throw Cindy. Absolutely. Cindy is up. Yeah, she's. I, I defer. I, I think that's a classy thing you just did, and it saves both of us. <laughs> Fox Business contributor and the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Michael Goodman. Good to have you both. Thank you. Let me start uh, with you, Ed. I, this is something I can't believe. I mean, Obama said he wanted to fundamentally transform the country. He lost that battle, and now he's tearing up, tearing up the Democratic Party, radicalizing it. I may, it may be beyond redemption. Well, he destroyed it while he was in the, in the hole in the presidency. I mean, he basically lost seats every, every cycle uh, going forward. Uh, his philosophy has been rejected by the country, and I think the reality is that the country does not want to go back. The country wants to go forward, and his policy of leading from behind uh, it was not something that basically gave us any recognition anywhere in the world. It's not an accident, is it, that Hillary Clinton is talking about civil war uh, that Eric uh, Holder is talking about kicking Republicans. Uh, the violence of his rhetoric is abysmal, particularly from a man who was once the country's top. I mean, this is a frightening thought. Once the country's leading law enforcement officer. Uh, and then Obama and his guns to knife fights rhetoric. This is appalling. And uh, your thoughts? Well, look, I think it's desperation time for Democrats. Uh, I, th that's how I read this series of events. It started with Maxine Waters and Cory Booker get in their face oh. in Congress, and then Clinton and now Holder. I mean, I, this to me says they are desperate. I think, frankly, that uh, a lot of them want to run for president. They're trying to distinguish themselves from the crowd by being the most radical, the most outrageous. Uh, but I think it makes the whole party look stupid. And it makes the party look as though it well, doesn't they look have stupid for a. Very well, that's true. Long it doesn't time. have far to go, do they? But but it. it but the Republicans haven't looked like geniuses either. By comparison, yeah. uh, and that is the comparison <laughs> for us. Yes, but but I but I do think that what it was revealing is that the Democrats don't have any ideas, and so this kind of language is about frustration and a craving for attention. You know, I'm so tired. I'm, to be honest with you, I mean, I've heard, you know, oh, they feel so bad about the election two years ago that they act like fools and violent fools. Yes. Uh, I'm so tired of hearing how they're hurt. They're painful. They're, they're crying in the steps of the uh, uh, Supreme Court. Who cares? It's, a, it's an adult world, uh, and we're a two-party system. One party always wins, and the other one loses. What is going on? Well, when your premise is that we should tax the people more and spend more on social programs versus give the people, the taxpayers, more of their own money and create jobs in a better environment, uh, it's a pretty easy sale if we make it. Uh, and that's all they have. They always basically want to spend more on programs, tax more, and if they got in, the first thing they would do is undo the president's tax programs. Well, there's taxes, deregulation. Absolutely. Right. Uh, and by the way, how are they going to set a tone that would inspire small business uh, in the America? As he said, he's going to restore prosperity right. for all Americans. Uh, he won't slice and dice it up like the Democrats. He is lifting every American right, right. now, uh, irrespective of uh, identity group, uh, race, creed. Uh, we have a middle class that's expanding instead right. of contracting. Uh, we have an economy that's growing 4%, not at the new normal that he talked about, where you have to diminish expectations, right. and maybe we'll hit one and a half one of these days. This is, this is madness. And Republicans are walking around like they're insurance clerks, with apologies, <laughs> frankly, uh, to insurance clerks. Well, I mean, there's no passion. There's, they, they, where, are, where are they? I mean, I'm watching Ron DeSantis running for governor of Florida the other night, last night. And he looked, I, I mean, he, what is he doing? That's why he's behind. And the reality is he better turn that around pretty quick. That's an important state for us. And, uh, uh, they, they, you know, you, t you take someone like Cruz. Cruz began uh, uh, as an underdog, uh, as an incumbent, uh, has come back, has a great campaign going. He's 10 points up. And the uh, president has made it very clear he will support him, period. As he should. And, Cruz will, and yep. Cruz will support him, as, as he has. Uh, and, and I think we're going to win the Senate and add some seats, and that's the most important thing. Well, look, I mean, as we've talked about here before, that uh, the candidates who embrace the Trump agenda and do not hold their nose about it uh, are the ones who are doing better in this environment because they are the ones that are aligned with the Republican 
party as it is right now. And those who are still fighting it, the, the, the Paul Ryans of the world, are the ones being left behind. Why are we and even properly talking so. about it? Why are we even I, talking I about I mention it no, just no, to I mean, rile you no, up. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here we are. It's October. He resigned, he resigned nine months ago. I only, only he's, not gone, he's not gone yet. He's the, not gone. The only thing I want to say, though, is Larry, yes, Larry Cuddle. The president made a very clear statement this morning on the Fed policy. Uh, he basically said they should not be raising the rates. Larry Kudlow, who's his economic advisor, went right out to the press and said just the opposite. He's a staff guy. He's not an independent person. The Fed's independent. He's not. He needs to get on the reservation. He works for the president of the Absolutely. United States. I think he needs to look. Well, first of all, no, let me be kind. Bill Shine, if you're listening, tackle the son of a gun before he does any more damage or utters more disrespectful nonsense before the press. Well, you can't. Fair statement. Fair statement.